A vital step that you needed to take when you came back as CEO, particularly to revive uh, a faltering U.S. business, was to re-engage those very partners we were just talking about, the people in the front lines, the baristas, yeah. the store managers. Now, they are the true brand ambassadors for the Starbucks brand. And because this is so relevant for Indian retail, we've actually put it up on screen, some of the comments that you made about the problems you faced, low motivation, high attrition, and so on. So I have two questions. First, how you dealt with these problems and a follow-up question. I'd like you to particularly touch upon your decision in early 2008 to close all your U.S. stores right. in order to retrain your baristas. That decision you knew, besides losing millions of dollars in sales and labor costs, yeah. would allow, to quote you, competitors to capitalize, critics to gloat, and cynics to smirk, and yet you yeah. chose to go ahead. Why? Yeah. Well, first off, let, let me comment on um, uh, how I view the, the courage it takes to lead. Uh, it's very, very easy and very comfortable to lead when you have the wind at your back. Now, we, we live by our core values, and we live by our core purpose and our reason for being. But the question was, in 2008, how much do you really believe in that when the headwinds are so great and the cynics are all lining up against you right. to really lean into your values? And what we decided to do in 2008 was our market cap, you said $24 billion, but that's not the true story. Our market cap dropped to below $6 billion. Our stock price was $6.81. You adjust that for the current split, our stock price now is about 120. But in, in 2008, uh, in an American expression is, they were coming for us. Does that translate? They were coming for us. They were hunting for us. And no one believed. The, the, the press was brutal. The bloom is off the rose. Starbucks best days are behind them. How could they possibly bring back Schultz? They need a professional manager who really knows how to turn around the company. Well, that may have been true, but I came back because of two reasons, love and responsibility. I love Starbucks Coffee Company almost as much as I love my family, and my wife would say sometimes it's the other way around. And my responsibility was to the people of Starbucks and their families to restore and preserve the company and bring it back. But I had to make some tough decisions. The first decision I had to make was I asked the leadership team at the time, uh, I need to be in front of every single store manager in, in America. And at the time, there was 9,000 store managers. Now, we were running out of money. We had negative store, uh, comp store sales. Our stock price was plummeting. And I asked, I need to have a meeting of 9,000 people. And people thought I was crazy. First of all, where are you going to hold that meeting? How are you going to bring everyone together? And here's the story quickly, because I know we got limited time. But as you can see, I'm with a little bit of passion about these kind of things. Um, we had, at the time in America, no company was traveling because it was a cataclysmic financial crisis. We had a bake-off of three cities, three municipalities, who came to us pitching the fact that we would hold this meeting and bring everyone there. And the city of New Orleans came and made this pitch. And as soon as we met them, I knew in my heart we had to go to New Orleans. Why? Because New Orleans had just suffered through a cataclysmic event, which was Katrina, a terrible, terrible hurricane. And they told us how much they needed this because this city was under siege. So we went to New Orleans. Now, people said to me, do you know how much money this is going to cost? And I said, no, how much is it going to cost? And they said, Howard, it's going to cost $30 million to bring 9, 10, 11,000 people to New Orleans for three days. The board is going to kill you. And I said, what better investment can we make at this time of crisis than an investment in our people? So we went to New Orleans. 
And I said, before we have our meeting, before we do anything that is Starbucks focused, I want to devote 50,000 hours of community service for a full day and give back to the community of New Orleans and help the people who are suffering. And we did that because that is the culture and values of the company. And then we had our meeting. Now here's the punchline. We had this incredible meeting. It was not a convention. It was, it was a catharsis. It was therapeutic. But the real question was, what am I going to tell them when I'm in front of nine, 10,000 people to get a return on this $30 million investment? And I was preparing my speech, which was so vitally important. It was a $30 million speech. And I, I had a little outline, and I showed it to a few people, and they said to me, you can't possibly say these things. Why? Because you're going to scare them. You can't tell them how bad it is. And here's the lesson that I learned then. The issue is, we live in a society, unfortunately, where many leaders in all walks of life are not truthful. They're not authentic. They don't tell the truth for a whole host of reasons. I decided that day that the characteristic that I wanted to display to 9, 10,000 Starbucks partners was vulnerability. That I needed their help. That I was worried. I was concerned. That I couldn't do this alone. That we had to lock arms. We had to face the same direction. And we had to prove to the world that we were going to make the difference. And my speech that day, if I had to label it as what it was, what was the call to action? It was, what does it mean to take something personally? What does it mean to make a difference with every single customer because we're fighting for our life? And I laid out for them what it would mean if, in fact, you exceeded the expectations of every single customer and they came back and they told a friend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we left New Orleans. We, it was like a tidal wave of passion, enthusiasm, and trust and faith in the mission. And we never looked back after New Orleans. And it wasn't the speech. It was empowering people with truth. It was empowering people to understand that Howard Schultz isn't going to make the difference. I can't lead them to the promised land alone. We have to do this together. And at the end, you have to answer the question in the affirmative. And this is critically important when we are all leading. And the question is, what is in it for them? And what it, what's in it for them must be tangible. It doesn't have to be money, but it has to be meaningful. As leaders, we have to create an environment where people are truly larger, feel, feel as if they are part of something larger than themselves. And if you can do that, the power of that is so significant. Starbucks is not a company that is greater or more or better or smarter than any other company in our field or, for that matter, any consumer brand. But you measure us against passion, conviction, courage, commitment, and an understanding of our values and our commitment to what we are, and we are going to beat you because we love what we do, and we feel deeply, deeply responsible to the 300,000 people who wear the green apron and their families to preserve and enhance this company the right way. And what we're trying to do in America today, uh, and now a little bit around the world, is another issue, and that is answering the question is, this is a time around the world where businesses and business leaders in the private sector around the world must do more. We can't rely solely on government. We have to do more. So the question for all of us is, how can we reinvent the role and responsibility of a company? And for me personally, what I feel is we have to do more for our people, more for the communities we serve, and we need to use our scale for good, for social impact. And that has resulted in a number of things that we've taken on that are unorthodox, sometimes misunderstood, but we're going to keep pushing because we believe strongly that we have a role and responsibility beyond just creating shareholder value and making money. But if you look at the performance of the company, this reservoir of trust with our people and our customer has significantly added value to the performance of the company. And I will say, finally, 
is this dream that I have, an aspiration about doing all these things, is linked directly to the fact that we must build shareholder value, we must perform, because that is the, the, the price of admission. But at the end of the day, I want to be, for Starbucks, a performance-driven organization through the lens of humanity. And every decision we're making strategically, I want to kind of metaphorically have two empty seats at the table, one for our customers and one for our people. And I want to answer the question, this, this strategic question and answer that we're now making, is it going to make our people proud? And if the answer is yes, I know we're on the right side. If the answer is no, I don't care how much money it's going to make, I don't care how much it's, how much it's going to drive the company, it's the wrong decision. We have to make our people proud of the intentions, the convictions, and the decisions that we make.